Hi everybody, welcome to the American Association of Heart Failure Nurses journal article review. I'm Kate Morgan and I'm a cardiology nurse practitioner with a special interest in heart failure. I'm also the chair of the social media committee and normally the journal article review is found over on our website aahfn.org but I decided to do something a little different, hopefully a little more fun, um, and put the journal review on a PowerPoint and video. So my article that I'm going to discuss today is anemia in heart failure, still relevant. Now I hope you guys have been taking notice, um, but the posts for this month in September have been geared towards anemia. So make sure you go over to our social media, um, either Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or all of them, and take a look at those posts and follow along. So um, here is uh, your references listed there. And the article was taken out of the Journal of American College of Cardiology. So the definition of anemia is derived from the World Health Organization and is defined as a hemoglobin of less than 13 in men and less than 12 in women. But we know that our heart failure patients may have a dilutional component resulting in a pseudo anemia. The authors of the article point out that the latest trials have not shown a clinical benefit targeting raising hemoglobin as opposed to treating iron deficiency. So remember, the, our patients with heart failure, they may not technically be anemic, uh, but they may be iron deficient. So why do patients with heart failure have anemia? Well, we know they have multiple comorbid conditions such as chronic kidney disease, advanced age, and diabetes. Uh, chronic kidney disease um, alone affects the erythropoietin production. Um, and as you can recall, the um, erythropoietin stimulates the bone marrow to produce the red blood cells. Iron deficiency occurs in heart failure also due to a component of chronic inflammation causing erythropoietin resistance and elevation hepcidin levels. And some of the medications for the treatment of heart failure can also contribute to anemia, such as ACE inhibitors and beta blockers. Why is anemia and iron deficiency important to diagnose and treat? I'm going to read to you a quote from the article. It is present in approximately one third of patients with heart failure, and these patients have a worse prognosis and poor quality of life. Studies have shown that if we treat iron deficiency independent of anemia, patients have a better functional status, exercise capacity, and quality of life. And, um, you know, these clinical benefits that have been shown are improvements in New York Heart Association functional class, exercise capacity, and quality of life scores. Uh, some of the trials that are mentioned in our article are the FAIR HF, CONFIRM HF, and EFFECT HF. So let's talk about treatment. Blood transfusions. Well, they're reserved for cases of severe anemia. Otherwise, some small temporary benefits um, are noted, but there is that risk of volume overload. Erythropoiesis stimulating agents, EPO, they're often used for patients with chronic kidney disease, but may be harmful uh, for patients with heart failure as demonstrated by the red HF trial. So this trial revealed significant events of ischemic stroke and embolic thrombotic events. Now how about oral versus um, IV iron? So we know that the oral iron does come with some side effects and sometimes difficult for patients to tolerate uh, due to the gastrointestinal um, side effects. So the iron out was one study uh, which didn't even find any significant improvement with exercise capacity or with the blood work um, that we uh, take for um, iron deficiency, which is ferritin and T saturation. And this study was a small study and it was um, uh, done in patients with heart failure and reduced ejection fraction.
Several trials um, have shown clinical benefit, as I mentioned previously, with IV ferric uh, carboxymaltose. What are the recommendations from the article? So the recommendations are screen all patients with heart failure for anemia and iron deficiency by ordering CBC, iron level, ferritin, TIBC. And uh, from the iron level and the ferritin, you can calculate the transferrin saturation uh, percentage. So how to diagnose if they have iron deficiency, you're gonna look at the ferritin level. If it's less than 100, you have uh, the diagnosis. If your ferritin level is between 100 and 300, then you need to calculate the transferrin saturation. And if it is less than 20%, then you have the diagnosis. So this was just the short synopsis. I didn't want to take up too much of your time, but please look and read uh, the full article. And please comment um, on our social media, either Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Uh, and uh, let me know what you think, um, any comments, any questions. Um, we would love to hear from you. Um, again, thanks for joining us at the American Association of Heart Failure Nurses.